Hi everyone, uh, my name is Usman and I work with the domestic admissions team. Uh, welcome to a new uh, virtual open week and today I'm going to tell you how to apply directly to ANU as an undergraduate student. Okay, uh, in this webinar I'm going to tell you how uh, quite a few things throughout and I will start with uh, telling you what is a direct application. I will tell you uh, how your application will be assessed, what are the prerequisites to study at ANU, and towards the end, I will go through a scenario to put all of this information into context. Okay, so let's start with uh, what is a direct application. A direct application to ANU is uh, a simplified application process uh, which lets you apply to admissions, scholarships, and accommodation all in under one application. Uh, the benefits of applying directly are that you do not have to pay an application fee. You do not have to submit uh, separate applications for uh, accommodation or scholarships. And additionally, you'll uh, be considered for a lot of scholarships that ANU offers under one application. And last but not least, you can receive a conditional offer uh, early in your year 12. And that conditional offer uh, can give you some level of certainty in a very stressful time. Applying directly to ANU is quite straightforward. You just head over to our website and under the un domestic undergraduate section, you click on apply. Okay, so who is eligible to apply directly to ANU? Uh, so domestic students, which includes Australian or New Zealand citizens, Australian permanent residents, or uh, Australian humanitarian visa holders, who are completing an Australian year 12 in any state during 2021, or they're completing an IB diploma in 2021, can apply directly to ANU. If you're a domestic applicant who is completing any other form of qualification, or you're completing the IV diploma in the May session, you would have to apply through UAC. <clears throat> so once you've submitted your application to ANU, we will assess your application in five stages. Uh, we will start by assessing your co-curricular and service requirements. Uh, then we'll move on to develop uh, your ANU selection rank. And then based on that selection rank, we will assess your ANU preferences. Um, once we have assessed your preferences, conditional offers will be released to your highest eligible preference, provided you are competitive for an offer. And those offers will be released in early August. Uh, uh, once you have received that uh, conditional offer and accepted it, you will continue to focus on your year 12. And when the final ATAR results are released, we will issue the final outcomes. Okay. The first step in the assessment process is assessing you, uh, if you have met the co-curricular and service requirements of the university. So this is a threshold requirement for all year 12 uh, and IB school leavers who want to study at ANU. I've listed on the screen uh, the seven skills that uh, these co-curricular activities are based on. And an applicant must meet three out of these seven skills in order to be eligible to apply to ANU. These skills can be met through a wide range of activities and we would encourage you to go to our website to find out the different activities uh, which are, you can uh, apply under and which skills each activity showcases and what, are the, uh, what is the evidence which is required to meet these conditions. It is really important that you uh, provide adequate uh, evidence to support your activity, otherwise your application would not be considered. So once you have met the co-curricular requirements, we will uh, move on to develop an ANU selection rank for you. Uh, your, we start by developing your year 11 rank, which is calculated using a, a complex mathematical model, which uh, uses your year 11 results and your school's past uh, ATAR performance. If you are uh, completing year 12 in ACT and NSW, and you have completed your uh, year 11 in these states, we have access to your results. However, if you are from any other state, uh, you would have to provide your year 11 results in a format which we can use. Uh, we would recommend you to head over to our website to find out more details about the format in which we would need your results. Your ANU selection rank then consists of your year 11 rank plus any adjustment factors that you're eligible for. Under the national access scheme, ANU awards uh, equity, subject, or performer adjustment factors. And uh, that will be added to your year 11 rank to arrive at your ANU selection rank. Once we have developed your ANU selection rank, we will move on to assessing your ANU preferences. So in your direct application, you can put up to five preferences. And once you've submitted your application, you can 
change these preferences around as much as you would like until the application submission deadline, at which point these preferences will be locked. Your entry into most courses will be assessed on the basis of your ANU uh, selection rank, and some courses may have additional selection criteria. So we would recommend you to go to our programs and courses webpage to find out what these uh, additional selection criteria could be. Uh, change of preference windows will open again for the final offer round between September and December. And one important thing to note here is that if you do receive an offer uh, for a program at the conditional offer stage, we strongly recommend you to keep it as one of your final set of preferences for the December round. It does not have to be your first preference. Um, I, now I will give you a little bit of advice about uh, how to select your preferences. So the first thing to consider is what it is that you most want to study at ANU. And put that as your uh, first preference. It is strongly advised that you don't have your preferred program as the lower preference on the assumption that you may not be eligible for an offer to the program because at this stage you're unaware if you were eligible for any equity subject or performer adjustment factors which will increase your overall selection rank and you may become eligible for your preferred program. It is also advised that uh, you put a program with lower selection rank requirements as one of your preferences and when your final, uh, so, so that you receive a conditional offer to this program provided you are competitive, and when your uh, final set of preferences will be reassessed in December, you may become eligible for one of your higher preferences or receive an unconditional offer to this program. <clears throat> so once you've finalized the uh, programs that you want to apply for, there are some additional checks that you need to be aware of. Uh, firstly, you need to meet the English language requirements of the university, and we would recommend you to go to our uh, website to find out more details about our English language policy. Once you've figured out what you want to do, you also need to check if ANU offers that program and if that program has any additional prerequisites. For example, to study um, a Bachelor of Engineering at ANU, you need to have taken advanced maths or equivalent mathematics courses in your year 12. You would have to meet these prerequisite requirements at the final offer stage in December before you're eligible for an offer. Uh, the degree programs that are listed on this slide may uh, have some additional selection, selection criteria, and we would encourage you to go to our website to find out what these could be. If your preference is to study a flexible double degree at ANU, um, we would you will be uh, you will apply for the group as a whole and not the individual courses. However, at the time of application, you need to indicate your preferred preferences within this group. This uh, selection would not be uh, set in stone at this stage and you will be assessed for the group as a whole rather than the individual programs. However, when uh, you will still need to meet the uh, individual requirements for the degree selections within this group. So what happens during the conditional offer round? So when we receive your application at the conditional offer round, we will start assessing your uh, topmost preference. And if you're not eligible for an offer for that preference, we will move down the list until you become eligible for a conditional offer to one of your preferences. Um, eligible for an offer means that you have met the co-curricular requirements of the university. Uh, you have uh, your selection rank is competitive for the preference that you've chosen and you have satisfied any additional selection criteria for this preference. Now conditional offers will be released in early August and that offer will clearly identify what the conditions are. So normally these will be conditioned uh, a conditional on achieving a certain ANU selection rank or meeting any program specific prerequisites or English language requirements if applicable to you. Once you receive uh, your conditional offer, the next step is simply to accept the conditional offer and all you really need to do is log back into the portal and accept the offer before the deadline. If you have applied and have been offered accommodation or scholarships, please make sure that you accept these offers as well. One important thing to note here is that you need to accept your conditional offer in order to be able to participate in the final offer stage, even if the offer is not to your preferred program. 
once you have received a conditional offer and accepted it, then you can continue to focus on your year 12. And uh, once you've completed your year 12 and received your ATAR scores, final offers will be released in December or January, depending on when ATAR scores become available. At the final offer stage, we will develop your ANU selection rank again using your ATAR results and any adjustment factors that you were eligible for. Based on this selection rank, if you become eligible for one of your higher uh, preferences, and a full offer will be made to that program. If you're not eligible for one of the higher preferences, but you do meet the conditions of your original offer, you will be made a full offer to that program. Um, a couple of things to note here are that you would have to meet the prerequisite requirements for the programs and English language requirements at this stage. And another important thing to note is that admission to ANU programs is on a competitive basis. So meeting the minimum entrance requirement does not guarantee an offer to one of your higher pre preferences. ANU has also introduced uh, compulsory maths and English requirements, uh, which are applicable to uh, students who want to start studying in a at ANU in 2022 and be beginning to apply in 2021. In order to meet these requirements, you will uh, need to complete at least one high school English course or unit and at least one high school maths course or unit in one semester during your year 11. Okay, let's try and put all of the information that I've just shared with you into context by looking at a scenario of a prospective ANU student uh, named David. So David is an Australian citizen and a school leaver from Jindabyne and goes to a school which is included in the rural schools list. He's interested in a career in the bush and either on land or perhaps as an engineer. He is an avid scout and so he decides to apply for a Bachelor of Engineering Honours and includes preferences for commerce and arts in his application. <clears throat> So I've created a little checklist for David at the conditional offer stage. So at the first stage, he needs to meet the co-curricular co requirements, which he meets uh, by scouting, which satisfies seven out of the seven skills listed on the uh, slide earlier. In addition, we calculated his year 11 rank to be 85. And as he goes to a rural school, uh, according to the ANU policy, therefore he is eligible for three adjustment equity-based adjustment factors, and his total ANU selection rank is 88. He's interested in, in engineering, so he needs to check if he's uh, doing the required level of maths in year 12. So according to his interests, uh, David lists down his preferences uh, on his application. And when we start assessing his application, we start with his topmost preference. So with a se uh, selection rank of 88, he, David does not need the cutoff to be considered for engineering. So we move on to his second preference. With his ANU selection rank of 88, he, uh, David not only meets the cutoff for a Bachelor of Commerce, but he, uh, his selection rank is deemed com uh, competitive enough to receive an offer. Therefore, we make a conditional offer in August to the Bachelor of Commerce. After receiving the conditional offer, David accepts his offer and continues to uh, with his year 12 studies. I've created another checklist for David once he completes his year 12. Um, and let's go down through the checklist. So he, we already know that he meets the core curricular requirements. Uh, after completing the year 12, he receives an ATAR score of 86. He, since he goes to a rural school, he received three equity-based adjustment factors. But now that he has completed the year 12, he was also eligible for five subject-based adjustment factors. So his final ANU selection rank comes out to be 94. Additionally, David also completed advanced maths and NSW, so he would meet uh, the prerequisite requirements for his engineering program. So assuming that he did not change the order of his preferences, and he accepted his conditional offer, we will start assessing his application again. At the final offer stage, we will start with the topmost preference and with a selection rank of 94, David not only meets the cutoff for engineering, he is deemed uh, competitive as well. As we already know, he met the maths prerequisite, so we will make a full offer to David for his Bachelor of Engineering. We will not continue to uh, assess his second and third preferences as he has already received an offer to the highest preference 
and David would not be able to take the Bachelor of Commerce up now. I hope this scenario put all of the information into some context and you understand how you can apply directly to ANU. Uh, now let me tell you a few important dates that you need to be aware of. So applications will open in early March in 2021 and they will close in late May. And please note that we do not accept any late applications. So we would encourage you to apply as early as possible and not wait until the application submission deadline. This will give us time to review your application and in case any additional documentation is required, you will have sufficient time to provide that. Please make sure uh, that you have also answered all the scholarships and accommodation qu questions because you would not get another opportunity to edit them. So the conditional offers will be released in early August and final offers will be uh, made in December or January, depending on when ATAR results are available. The change of preferences window for the conditional offer stage will be between early March to late May. And for the final offer stage, it will be between early September to mid December. Please note that all of these dates are to be confirmed, but the application timeline will be published on our website. Lastly, if you have any questions or any confusions, you're more than welcome to contact the ANU admissions team. Uh, due to the situation surrounding the COVID-19 crisis, our team is working for remotely and therefore all the inquiries need to be di directed at the email address, which is on this slide. <laughs>